there. Welcome to another episode of In the Studio at Davis Media Access. I'm Lynn Weaver. Today I have a very special guest, Dr. Alexander Borofsky. Thank you for coming in, Dr. Borofsky. Thank you for inviting me, Lynn. It's a pleasure to be here. You are a professor of pathology and laboratory medicine at UC Davis Health, but you also lead a very new uh, research initiative founded by the uh, National Institutes of Health, uh, which is called All of Us. That's right. Catchy title, mm. what is All of Us? <laughs> well, All of Us is sort of a play on words. It intended to mean all of us, but also all of the US. This is a nationwide study and um, it's an ambitious undertaking. Very ambitious. But yes. it's one that I think is very important in this day and age of medicine. Um, the idea is rather than have very small research studies that are based in different areas of the country or in other countries, we can have one sort of large, massively parallel, if you will, study that occurs in individuals all over the United States representing all the different populations that make up our very complex uh, background here in the United States. It's a very ambitious project. Could be akin to the uh, mapping of the genome. <laughs> it's very the similar human. in scale to that. Yes. Um, so the origins of this date back to an announcement made in January of 2015 by then President Obama, who said, we need to do a better job of having health recommendations, both preventative and treatment-based recommendations for the whole population. But in order to do that, we need to study the whole population. And so he proposed then that we assemble this cohort of one million people across the United States. So the goal is one million volunteers. That's correct. So uh, I've heard that uh, it uh, the basis for this, to some extent, is this precision medicine. So what do you mean by precision medicine? Yeah, so precision medicine is a, a new term, um, and it's one that is designed to capture the complexity of our current process in healthcare. And so um, it used to be for a given disease or even for you know, a given nutritional recommendation, we'd make a single rec recommendation that would apply to all. But cookie more, cutter. Yeah, that's right, cookie cutter. One recommendation, uh, one size fits all. But more and more we're learning that one size fits all is not appropriate, that different recommendations need to be tailored to different unique individuals. And so that's the, the whole idea behind this, is we want to understand that complexity and we want to understand which treatments or recommendations benefit which populations of people? So uh, I'm trying to understand, so what uh, this, the goal of this enormous mega study, a uh, research study is to uh, encompass, include so many factors of a person's uh, right. uh, life, I guess. Right, so if you, if you really break it down into the very basics that apply to your health, this is, in some ways, it's common sense to most of us. Yes. But it breaks down into um, your genetics. Who are your parents and your ancestors? That's right. going to play a role. But also playing probably an equal role is your environment. Mm -hmm. What are the exposures, whether they're toxic exposures or good nutrition exposures? They can be both good and bad. So what is your environment? Yes. Um, and then finally, what are your personal health habits? Mm -hmm. Do you exercise? Mm -hmm. Do you smoke? Do you drink? These questions um, can have actually different implications in different populations. Yes, of course. And so we're learning that and we're trying to tailor our recommendations to be the most beneficial to the individual. Um, and also, I think, perhaps, and contradict me if I'm wrong, that uh, knowing a lot more about the person will also um, uh, prompt what medicine to give the patients. And, Absolutely true. Uh, yes, and the dose and all that. And yeah. we're really just at the beginning of learning how to do that. Mm -hmm. That's um, precision treatment for different types of diseases. Mm -hmm. And there are very important diseases that we're talking about that we know um, 
there are individual factors that are at least playing a role in. And, and that goes um, into heart disease, mm -hmm. very common, mm -hmm. and even cancer, cancer, cancer treatment. Yes. And we well, know there are differences in cancer treatment responses for different populations now, but we need to study that in more detail to be more precise about how we offer those treatments. So a couple of um, questions before we come uh, to the point of why you're coming here, because uh, I believe you're hoping to uh, have responses from people who would become volunteers to this absolutely, study. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, but the, is this are you utilizing some of the data uh, that was collected previously from other um, institutes or other regions of the country? Yeah, so we're partnering um, with um, institutes and even private entities across the country in this endeavor. So our particular consortium is up and down the state of California, so we are the California consortium for the all of us. Study. UC Davis is, and yes. And it includes UC Davis with our partners UC San Diego, mm -hmm. UC Irvine, USC, UC San Francisco, and Cedar sinai Hospital. Fabulous, yes. Yeah, so it's a, it's a great group. I've really enjoyed working with the group. Yes. Um, we're all very enthusiastic and hardworking and uh, yeah. getting along great. Well, but it's a novel It allows initiative. us to recruit patients from up and down the coast and, yes. and here in the Central Valley. Well, um, what are the requirements or the eligibility uh, to become a volunteer in this study? Right. Uh, could you give us an age, race, uh, um, sure. uh, weight, sure. <laughs> women, right. men, children? <laughs> at, at the moment, the study is open to individuals 18 and older. We are not yet recruiting children. Yes. We would like to include children because they have their own special needs when it yes. comes to treatment. And, um, and recommendations. Uh, but for the moment, it's 18 and up. Um, but it's anybody in the state of California is eligible to join our consortium. And then nationwide, there's always a mechanism for any individual to become involved. Um, and what would uh, an individual have to do uh, if he or she wants to join. I know that uh, we, you have a website which is actually extremely well done. Thank you. I went there several times while I was preparing for this interview and it has videos and uh, uh, questions, uh, frequently asked questions, and it explains the goals and the mission of the study. So it, it's really very, very uh, nicely done. Thank you. Uh, so uh, what Say I wanted to join this, what yeah. should I do? So you visited the website, and I would encourage everyone to visit the website. That's the portal of entry. So it's joinallofus.org. That's um, easy. Join it's, all of us. Join all of us. Um, all one word, no spaces. Yes. Just joinallofus.org. Dot org. We didn't get allofus.com. Somebody else had that, I guess. But <laughs> So don't go to allofus.com, but go to joinallofus.org. Um, there's plenty of information about that, uh, about the study, everything involved in the study there, but you can immediately click the button to join. And the, um, we call it an informed consent process, is all done in the comfort of your home, online, at your computer. There's nice little videos prepared for that as well um, that I encourage everybody to go through. You can decide at any point that you're not interested and turn off the video and, and turn off the web page, but um, hopefully you'll be intrigued. Yes. And what uh, we're going to be asking the individual I was going for, to ask yeah. you that, yes. So what we're asking for is we are asking, asking for um, a blood sample. Mm -hmm. um, the blood sample is going into our bank and it's going to be provided to researchers doing cutting edge research in mm -hmm. all kinds of things mm -hmm. from genetics to metabolism, mm -hmm. you name it. Mm -hmm. um, and all of the studies that get access to those will go through a rigorous process to make sure that they're the best possible studies. So how would they, would I provide this blood sample? Right, so you would go through the consent process online and you'd make an appointment with us. And we've tried to make oh, it see. very convenient mm -hmm. for you to come in at your convenience mm -hmm. um, because of some shipping things. It's usually in the morning yes. or early afternoon. We can't um, take samples later in the afternoon because we need to get them properly stored and it's hard to do that later in the day. And you don't need to uh, 
be fasting for this? No, nope, it's mm -hmm. not a fasting sample, so it's come as you are. Um, when you come in, we're also going to take some measurements. So mm -hmm. we're going to take your weight and your blood pressure. Mm -hmm. um, we're also going to measure your waist and hip circumference. Yes. Some people don't want to know, A, their weight, or B, their <laughs> hip circumference. But uh, we will tell you what our measurements show. Yes. Um, and so that's part of the study. And then we'll also ask for permission to keep track of you by monitoring your electronic medical record. And so almost everybody has yes. some form these of an electronic yes. medical record these yes. days. Well, I can understand that uh, uh, all these data points might, be, might bring a lot of concern to people about right. what are you going to do with that and right. who is going to use these, uh, the, these uh, right. records. So, so data security is very important to us as well. And so um, the goal of the study is to collect this data, and we do have to keep track of you as an individual so we can monitor your health over time. Yes. And that's important to the outcomes in the study. Yes. But we still will, um, whenever sharing a sample or sharing those data points, we will keep your name and any other identifiers out of it. So we'll de it's called de-identification mm -hmm. of the data mm -hmm. so that the researchers will have a large pool, hopefully a million mm -hmm. samples to deal with, mm -hmm. but they won't know any of the one million names in the, that I are understand. attached to those samples. Yep. They in turn will provide the data back to the central data warehouse mm -hmm. and you as an individual will be able to log on to your portal with your password and see what the results are on your sample. So we're reporting mm. the data back to you. Mm -hmm. um, in some ways, we're trusting you to be able to handle that, right? So mm -hmm. um, we don't want you to be worried about a particular data point. We'll give you as much information as we can. There will be unusual circumstances occasionally where something that we find is, we think, important to your health immediately. And so in that context, we will recontact an individual and say, we found out X, Y, or Z, and, and that should trigger you going to your doctor and talking about next options because of that. But that's a rare circumstance. Well, that's very, very interesting. Um, so uh, in a way, you are guaranteeing the privacy of, uh, of these uh, data. And who will be the ultimate uh, user of, of this? Uh, well, ultimately, um, the goal is for this to go into the medical literature. Yes. And then provide the data that physicians need to treat people in the future. And so probably this is not going to benefit you, but it should benefit people like you in the future. And yes. that's why I always encourage people to think seriously about joining the study, because you do want to represent your people, if you will. That's and right. That your genetics, your environment, your neighbors, Yes. are in your environment, you can represent your neighbor's environment, you can represent your family's genetics yes. in the cohort to make their health better in the future. Yes, well, it's a type of immortality in some ways. It is. Uh, but uh, so that, that certainly is an incentive. And of course, you're giving each of your volunteers a million dollars, right? A million dollars, no. <laughs> we do give a $25 gift card to either Amazon or Target for your time that you take to come and donate your sample and, and our, our appreciation for that time. Well, that's good. Yes. Uh, something. I least. wish we could give more. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, is the, the NIH continuing to fund, fund this project or they've already given the money? It's a, the money? It's a, a fait accompli. <laughs> yeah, so the money is um, in a unique kind of mechanism at the NIH where um, renewal of the funding is contingent upon um, active participation and how much recruitment we do, et cetera. It's in some ways a little more like a contract from the National Institutes I of Health. I understand, yes. But, um, but we are all on the same team and we're trying to solve the same problems, mm -hmm. how to reach out to the community mm -hmm. and how to encourage patients to participate, how to design the study so that data security yes. and other concerns that patients may have 
are addressed yes. and allow them to participate. Well, that's great. How many volunteers do you have uh, approximately now in California? We have um, just over 4,000 volunteers in California so far. We just started recruitment in earnest in, in May. May. That's, that's right. So, that's so it's quite very a, early days, yeah. and we anticipate this going on for five years, maybe longer, maybe as long as 10 years for accrual of the million patient cohort. It sounds very excited. I'm afraid our time is up. Well, it's been a pleasure. Uh, and uh, I hope that uh, this uh, interview will clarify some of the uh, concerns that people have had. And uh, maybe I'll join. I hope you do. <laughs> Thank you very much for coming in, uh, Dr. Borofsky. Uh, we may get you back, if you're willing, to of uh, course, have anytime. a follow-up on this uh, very important study, and very much of interest to our community. And... Uh, Thank you for watching, all of you, from all of us here at Davis Media. See you next time.